Hey everyone, this is Free Sky Steve, and today we are going to be talking about something that's not really super well covered, and that is how to get images and sounds from somewhere else, like from your phone. If you take a photo of a plane, for example, that you want to put in your transmitter, or sounds that you downloaded on the internet, how do you get that into your transmitter? And unfortunately, there's some videos that came out a long time ago, back when Ethos first came out, and we didn't have these tools at all. So the videos showed you these really complex things about how you download files and you have to use some third-party apps like Audacity and to get the sound files to work right and then get a free image processing um, software to go in and change the specifications to the exact specifications of what the transmitter needed. It's a lot easier now and so we're going to save you a lot of time and effort and please like this video so that what we can do is we can get found in the Google searches because, or, and also YouTube searches, because as it stands right now, these old videos have been around for so long that Google tends to like those better. And when I say Google, I also mean YouTube. Sensor loss. YouTube tends to like those better, and all it does is give people the wrong information. So with that being said, we're looking at right now the ethos simulator and what i've done is i've gone ahead and i've loaded some files into here and we're going to be coming back to this a little bit later but oh by the way the reason why i sound different and this whole setup looks a little different is because i am doing this video from my office because i needed uh, some extra tools that i was able to do at the office and not my home where i normally record these videos so, with that being said, let's get into the, jump right back into um, Ethos Suite. So, I was talking about these tools, and I have, if I go into radio information, this is the transmitter that I have in front of me right now. It's an oldie but goodie. Um, but uh, this is just one we have laying around, and so I'm using it for recording the videos. Okay, so the, some of these new tools after download center is this thing called Image Manager and Audio Manager, and there's really not any great information to explain how these things work. So we're going to do the Image Manager first. And one of the questions that people often ask me is, why don't we have a camera built onto our transmitters? And the, the simple answer is, is that for a cheap camera, it's extra money and the photos aren't going to turn out that great for a really good camera it's going to be even a lot more money and our thinking is you've got a cell phone why not use your cell phone and take the images from that which has a really great camera better than anything that we would put in a transmitter use the images from that and put them into your transmitter so the first thing we're going to do is go to this image manager and you can see that it has a lot of interesting things set up. Usually when I, let me change that right there because that was when I, the default when I had it. So this is not very informative. It says list to be transcoded. And then there's this thing that's grayed out called transcode. And you can open folders. It's not exactly clear how this all works. All right, so the big plus button right here is the first clue that is that's where we're going to look for the image file. Now, if you have a cell phone that can plug into your computer, you can go into it and you can open up and browse inside it there. Sometimes it's easier for you to go into your cell phone with your Windows File Explorer and download the image to a folder so it's all by itself and that's what I've done here I went into it's actually a roundabout way of doing it I, I went to Google Photos downloaded the photo I wanted put it onto my PC and I hit plus and you might not be able to see this because there's a new screen that popped up 
But what I'm looking for is a directory I called created called images. I found the image that I'm looking for and then I hit OK and it pops up. So now we see here's an airplane image and what I want to do is I want to put this onto my radio. So what it does by default is it finds that you have a radio plugged in and so whatever the last drive of your computer typically when you plug your transmitter in the very last drive not always the case but it's usually the case for most people the last drive is the drive that has a directory called audio and you keep looking down and it has this thing called bitmaps and models and that's the correct folder what was not correct is it has a recommended file size and you have to go in and change it so you have is going into the correct folder and the size is correct and all we do is just hit the word transcode and you'll see it's a message pop up that says transcode finished and we're done so that's really all there is to it it brought in the image the it's the correct pixel depth it's sized it's everything it's going to be beautiful you can bring it right into your transmitter and you can use that as an option it will pop up on the screen um, all right so audio manager we're gonna go into here and this one is a little bit more work and the reason why is because I'm going to show you first of all how we got this set up and then I'm going to talk about how we converted everything and then I'm going to show you on the simulator what it's like and then I'll actually play you the audio file on the transmitter so you have an opportunity to hear that it does work so what I've done is I'm going to jump back into the file manager okay so we have not seen this yet and as I was describing before in most computers the last drive is the one that if you click into it you have all these drives and this is where we found the models bitmaps so we're looking for audio and since I speak English when I set up the transmitter it set up an EN directory so if you speak French it'll probably be an FR or whatever language you speak that's the correct one I went in here and there's this one that's called US and GB for Great Bit Britain. So those are the two sound, these things are usually, if you go inside of here, they're loaded with files, right? Both in the Great Britain. So have all these really interesting sound effects that you download when you update your transmitter. Um, this, however, is not there. This is a directory I made, and how I made it is I just right-click on it, and I created a new folder, and that gave me the opportunity to create this thing, a uh, folder that I called Miss Sounds. And the reason why we want to do this is we want to be able to isolate our custom sounds away from the default sounds and then the question is can you pull these up later on the transmitter yes and once I explain it to you it will become a lot clearer so anyway that's what I did in the nutshell so we're gonna go back now to the transmitter and we are going to jump into back to home and we are Actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, instead of going here, let me first take you back one more time. I'm sorry about this. We're going to go into Ethosuite, and we're going to transcode some sounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to, same as the image processor, we just go in there, or image manager, I should say. You hit the plus button and that will lead us to the directory where I have my, I, what I do is I search for my sound folder and I go in there and when I find the file, maybe it popped up on your screen. Sometimes it does record, sometimes it doesn't, but essentially all I did was I searched for the folder where the sound file was 
and now that I have it, if I hit it once, you might not hear it. Um, the speakers take a couple seconds to fire up. So I figured that's always a fun little sound to have, especially when someone has a horrible landing and you want to give them some crap. You just flip a switch and there you are. It's, it's half the fun of flying with a bunch of buddies is every once in a while to be the jokester. So how do you get that sound onto your transmitter? Well, the first thing we did was we found the sound file. And this is in no way ready to go. You can't drop this onto your radio, even though you might be able to see it and it won't play. So we have to, once again, transcode this. And so we found the file. Now we have to make sure the output path is correct. And what it did was it wanted to put it into a folder, my downloads folder, which eh, I don't want it there. I wanted to go into my radio. Now that I've shown you that I made this drive, it is an option. So the miscellaneous sounds drive, and then all I do is hit the word, once I have the setup, it's English, miscellaneous sounds, I hit the, the word transcode, and after a couple seconds, everything is groovy, and it says transcode is finished. Okay, now, what we have to do is we have to work on this from the actual radio side. So we're gonna get, jump into the simulator once again, and I'm going to set up a new one of these. So, well, first thing I want to do is I need to set up something. Uh, this is the gear icon. Gear means that this is a system setting. We're going to make it a permanent change. We have to tell the radio that we have a new drive we want to look at for sounds. So we go into here. It's under general. And we go down to... What, what this normally would look like is this, right? And sometimes by default, it will, it will automatically say voice to is that new directory. If it doesn't, you go in here and select miscellaneous sounds. And then you just hit return. So now you can see voice three. We can put another directory in there so we can create a new directory in that same location, give it a name, and we can also put sounds in there as well. So for example, if you have a directory Let's say you fly both planes and helicopters. So you can have one, uh, it would see plane sounds, another one that said helicopter sounds. So it would make it easier for you to find things, right? That's the beauty of it. It's essentially, these are just file folders and that's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna go in and we're going to create a special function. I wanna set this up. Uh, I've already set up on switch D, so I'm gonna set it up on switch E. So what I'm going to do is go into airplane icon. This is for models. We can go all the way to the next page here under special functions. I'm going to create something a plus. I'm going to change it to play audio. And I need to take the state from enabled to or disabled to enabled. Now what I'm going to do instead of being switch always on, which doesn't make sense. We actually have to set this. I'm going to set it to switch E up. And it's not a global. If I turn global on, what this means is that everything I do, th that this switch will be assigned for every single model I ever make, which I don't want to have happen. Now, what typically what you see is you just get this when you look at voice. It's just one directory. But now that we have a second directory, I can go in there and select it. So now I have voice two, miscellaneous sounds. And repeat is once, skip on startup, yes. And add a new line sequence. We're gonna play a file. And the file is in there, it's the Wawa. So if I were to test it out on my transmitter, let's go back to home and I've hit D. Again, it takes a second on this to fire up. So I flip the switch up and I've, well, actually it was on switch. Did I set up on E as well? 
Yep, I'm set up on E as well. So, all right, so with that being said, I do thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. But that's how it all works.